Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Deconstrut. I'm Charlotte, if you're new here, and I do DIY and sewing videos. Today, we're gonna do something a little bit more luxury, a little bit glam, bougie even. We're taking dust bags and flipping them into corset tops. Now, corset tops have been super trendy lately. Some of my favorite YouTubers already have corset top tutorials out. If you wanna go watch those, I'll link them down below. Um, I particularly like With Wendy's and the Nava Roses uh, corset top tutorials. This pattern um, for mine is actually based off of the Nava Roses pattern. I thought it'd be a little bit easier to modify a pattern versus drafting one from scratch. Now, I did get these dust bags off of Poshmark. Depop is also a good resource, eBay, and you can find them anywhere from like $15 to like $40 or $50. It just depends on the size of the dust bag and like what brand it is. Do be careful about the measurements for the dust bag uh, for your top. Do you want it to fit your body. <laughs> so if you have any dust bags lying around or if you've just purchased one, and you want to make it into a clothing item, this is the video for you. So if you would like to learn how to change a dust bag into a corset top, then please keep on watching. So I'm gonna use Nava Rose's pattern as a base and then I'll show you guys how I modify it and like what it will be for um, the dust bag. Since the logo of the Dior is kinda in the middle of the dust bag, um, I'm gonna have to modify the pattern to somehow move the Dior piece closer to the, like the top chest area around here um, because I think it'll look a lot nicer. Hopefully it turns out because um, I also have other dust bags ordered in, especially like a Saint Laurent one. I think that'll look really, really cool. I also have a Balenciaga one as well. So maybe I'll do that one. One of the first steps I took in modifying the design was that I combined the two front pieces of the Nava Rose pattern to get a feel for how large of a front piece would be needed for the corset. So with the front pieces traced together, it was a bit too big for the dust bag that I had and I felt the pattern was a little bit too wide for me so I took it in half an inch on either side. And as you can see, it basically fits onto the dust bag and I think once we open up the seams, it'll fit perfectly um, for the corset top that I have in mind. Um, yeah, so I think this is the front piece done. First things first, we'll have to just uh, take this apart. To disassemble the dust bag, I first removed the drawstring straps from the bag and proceeded to use a seam ripper to open up the dust bag. Yesterday we left off doing the pattern and seam ripping the dust bag, which is now fully disassembled into one large piece which was actually a really cool like thing I learned. This was just a fake seam on the bottom of their bag. The width of this bag is not very wide. Um, yeah, it barely covers my chest. So this is the final pattern. So the front piece and then this is kind of like the side piece that attaches. But the main thing is to get the logo flush and in the center of this piece right here. Kind of looks like I'm wearing armor. So I'll leave a copy of the pattern that I created and also the dimensions of the dust bag so you guys can reference that. Hopefully this works out well. I've never actually made a corset. But let's get started with ironing out the Dior bag and then we'll find a nice lining fabric to put on the inside um, and hopefully get our pieces cut out today. It's always a good idea to iron and prep your fabric so you have an accurate piece to cut out for your project. I use the iron with a high steam setting to get all the creases out of the bag. I'm gonna take my pattern, place it on top, and make sure the logo is centered, and I'm going to cut it out. So I think I've decided on what fabric I'm gonna use on the inside. And I believe this is actually like dress pants material, but it's super old. So I'm just gonna cut the exact same pieces out of this. So the corset pattern is made up of three pieces. You should have two back pieces and one middle front piece. And you will need all these pieces cut out of the dust bag and the lining material. As you can see, I've overextended the back pieces to leave some extra room in case of fit issues and for installing the grommets later on. 
With all the pieces laid out, you'll want to start sewing the side seams of the corset, doing the outer layer separate from the lining layer. Make sure to have good sides facing and sew with a straight stitch. It's another day in the sewing room today. We're gonna be continuing the Dior corset top. I have the pieces right here. Today we're gonna try to do the boning structure, which I'm really excited about. I spent a little bit more time thinking about how I want the corset top to look and fit and I decided that I don't really want a top stitch line along the top or the bottom of the corset. So in order to achieve that, that means I have to do the boning casings beforehand and for the boning casings, we're actually gonna be using bias tape for this. This is kind of like a good little hack um, or you can create your own bias tape or use actual boning channeling, which I don't have. Um, so I'll be using this for that. So let's get started. Okay, here is the front Dior piece. And what we're gonna do is flip it over. So we're working on the back side. I'm gonna take my pattern piece laid on top where I had drawn the lines and try to match up where I'll be lying the bias tape and just drawing the lines onto my top. So I marked out the middle point of where my channels are going to be. And all I'm gonna do is take some of this bias tape, like lining up the center of it over top. And I'm just gonna stitch on either side of the bias tape. And we're just gonna do that for every single line, as well as the sides here. Here's a look at the first channel. You can see that's what it looks like on the front side. And then on the back side, that's what our bias tape looks like. And now we're just gonna repeat that on all the chalk marked sections uh, so we can have all the boning channels for the top. boning channels are completed. They'll pop out a lot more once we put the uh, zip ties in. And then this is kind of what the back looks like. You can see the ones on the seams are a little bit different. I just ended up unfolding the bias tape a little bit further because I had to stitch it on the front side and I didn't want to miss it. So that's just why those are a little bit wider. It won't do anything weird. And all of this will be covered, so you won't be seeing that. We're gonna be attaching this top seam next, uh, but I wanted to show you guys what kind of the boning channels look like on the inside, so you guys can have an idea of what um, it should look like before you move on to the next step. Lay the lining and outer pieces on top of one another with the good sides facing, pin and sew along the top edge of the corset, taking care not to close up the strap ends during this step. We're just gonna take scissors and cut notches on any curved area and that will allow the top to flip inside out a bit better without any bunching. I was ready to move on to the next step of inserting these zip ties. And I got a little bit ahead of myself because I completely forgot how the straps will attach on the back. I just quickly sewed a strap I haven't turned it inside out yet. And I had these little tiny um, metal rings. So then the strap has something to go through in the front and in the back. I just I can't believe I forgot to do that. I just need to like undo a little bit of this top stitch here. So that's not too, too bad. I measured three and a half inches from the last like boning section. 
Uh, three and a half inches seems to be the correct measurement for a strap that just goes around my shoulder here. So we're gonna just take these little loops for the back and just sew them in. So I just closed it back up. I did use a stitch length of two for this just to reinforce it. And since I will be stitching along this edge later, um, that will also help it hold. Really nice detail, I think, to finish off the strap on the back. So next we'll be taking our zip ties. These are the super long ones I found in my basement. I'm just gonna trim off this bendy section at the top. Our zip ties are nicely rounded so they won't poke through our fabric. What you're gonna wanna do is insert the channels into here and mark where to cut it. So I'm just taking a marker and marking where I need to trim the boning. We're actually gonna be trimming the zip ties probably a centimeter to half an inch higher than where they end so that when we sew the bottom here we're not gonna break any needles we're going to finish off the bottom edge by just stitching a straight stitch across just like we did on the top um, and then we'll be flipping this inside out i'm really happy with how this is turning out this is what it looks like Everything just looks super clean. I'm definitely gonna be making more. This is my lame try-on attempt. Very mini top, but if you get one of the bigger dust bags, you can do a longer version. The last thing that we'll need to do is just finish the edges, trim it and add the grommets in. Probably just gonna finish up the bottom stitching today and then we'll do the grommets um, another day. Uh, these are the grommets I'll be using. I haven't tried these before, but I've seen other YouTubers use these, so I'm gonna try these ones out today. And I'm also gonna use a piece of wood as the base on top of this cutting mat as to not damage the table. And you'll also need a hammer to help install them. So in the eyelet kit includes the setting pieces. So this is gonna be your base piece right here, this roundish one. And then the longer part is the top that you'll use to hammer in the eyelets like so. Um, taking my eyelets, I'm just gonna roughly place them on. I'm actually going to take a marker to mark the very first one and the bottom one, and then I'm gonna do some calculations to determine how far apart I need the rest of the ones in between. You wanna make sure when you're cutting the holes to make them smaller than the hole of the grommet. You only want this to just fit through. You don't want it to be larger than the grommet or else the grommet will fall out. We have all the grommets on one side of our top now and we wanna make sure that they line up on the other side. So what we're gonna do is take the two ends, overlap them like so. So with a, a fine tip marker, we're just gonna mark the center of every hole and that way both sides will be perfectly lined up and we'll have a nice lace up back for our ribbon later on. So I'm gonna finish insetting the grommets off camera and then I'll show you the final look. Never roll back, I won't go back Don't wanna waste time with you 
wanted you so bad Didn't hold back And now I can't forget you You've got me climbing mountains in my head, 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 head. So I love how this top turned out I think it's really fun I also made it so you could like change out the straps if you wanted to I'm just using like this waxed shoelace cord with like metal egglets on the end um but i think like a ribbon or like maybe pearl beads even for the dior like kind of brand would be really cute so there's a lot of flexibility in how you want to customize and make this top for yourself i already have plans of making other ones i want to make a saint laurent one a balenciaga one would be really cute um so you guys will probably see those up on my tiktok and on instagram uh, links are down below if you want to follow me that would be great thank you guys so much for watching today's video i hope you enjoyed it and found it helpful if you liked it please give it a thumbs up that really helps me and if you recreate any of my diys please use the hashtag deconstruct love seeing your recreations i hope everyone is safe and healthy and i'll see you guys next time in another video bye